And you've heard me and you've heard the Minister of Public Safety and the Prime Minister will never accept it. And that's why we took a very important decision. That is Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie uh, talking about her government's decision to expel uh, a Chinese diplomat. That decision was made yesterday. In response, China has expelled a Canadian diplomat posted in Shanghai. Uh, we'll have lots of reactions throughout this evening, but my first guests have a unique perspective. Kevin Garrett lived in China for 30 years before he and his wife were arbitrarily detained in 2014, pardon me, accused of spying. Their arrest came shortly after a Chinese citizen was arrested in Canada at the request of the U.S., which sought his extradition on spying charges. And former Ambassador Guy Saint-Jacques was Canada's ambassador to China then. He was part of the team that worked to free Kevin Garrett, who was finally released in 2016. Hi, Mr. Saint-Jacques. Hi, Mr. Garrett. Good to see you both. Thank you very Hello. much for making the time. Thank you for the invitation. Very glad to be here. It's a pleasure to, uh, to interview you, of course, each, but, but especially together. Um, and I wanted to start off by asking you, uh, Mr. Saint-Jacques, if you think the federal government made the right decision in expelling this diplomat. I would say it was uh, totally the, the right uh, decision. In fact, I'm surprised that it was not made uh, earlier. Uh, I don't know if there was a, a systemic uh, failure or um, uh, someone that uh, didn't, didn't do his job at uh, uh, ministerial level or in the office of the prime minister. But uh, clearly, uh, this kind of action uh, uh, requires a, a serious reaction by the Canadian government, and I think it was totally appropriate. Mr. Garrett, I see you nodding. You think it's also the right decision? Yeah, absolutely right. And I didn't realize until I was listening to something else today that it took them a week to decide. That's, uh, that's too long. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to just follow up with you because the, the substance of why the, the government ultimately made this decision became evident initially through Globe and Mail reporting, which is based on intelligence from CSIS from 2021, mm -hmm. which basically said CSIS, sorry, pardon me, this diplomat worked to, uh, along with the regime, as a representative of the regime, target Tory MP Michael Chong and his family. That targeting, that idea is not a, does not come as a surprise to you, right? Not to me at all, no. And why is that? Uh, because China has been doing those types of things for a very long time. And they do it to other Chinese citizens here. They do it to Canadians. They did it to our family uh, during my case. So I'm, I'm not surprised. And what exactly did uh, they do to your family from, from where you sit? Well, when they, you know, falsely arrested me and uh, actually abducted me, uh, my family was followed uh, by Chinese people in, Chinese, in cars. They were Chinese. They were their devices were hacked into, and uh, many things like that happened. What are the wider implications, Mr. Saint Jacques, of uh, and this point that Mr. Garrett is making is one Mr. Chong has made in interviews I've conducted over the last week as well, which is it's not just Mr. Chong, right? Even the report itself said other MPs were targeted. Forget about MPs. Obviously, regular people, people, Mr. Garrett's family, for example. What are the wider implications of that for the federal government? Well, I think what we have seen is that uh, uh, as long as the federal government didn't, didn't uh, take any action, uh, Chinese operators felt that they had the, the, the green light, they, they could do anything uh, they want. And, of course, since uh, Xi Jinping came to power in November 2012, uh, he has increased the budget of the United Front Work Department. And so th this kind of activity uh, has, is receiving a lot more funding, and the, the approach by China is to counter what they call the, the five poisons. Uh, so it's uh, that, uh, uh, by that they mean uh, Xinjiang, Tibet, uh, uh, Falun Gong, uh, Taiwan, and promoting uh, uh, democracy in China. And so they will go to a, a very large extent to silence people who dare to criticize them uh, mm -hmm. on those uh, issues. Uh, and, and as uh, Mr. Garrett was saying, uh, this is a a tactic that they use uh, all the time with uh, Chinese uh, students uh, who are in Canada. They, if they say something uh, bad for the uh, critical of the regime, their family receives a, a visit in, in the next 20, uh, 24 hours. They are told, if you don't uh, tell your child to behave, uh, there will be problems for you. Uh, you know, I know that people had their other children kicked out of school. Uh, they, some have been put in jail. So it's a very repressive regime. And I think uh, this calls for the Canadian government to recognize that there is a systematic uh, effort by uh, China and that we have to find ways to counter this. A special effort should be made 
to reassure the Canadian diaspora uh, that if they are intimidated uh, or harassed and that they report uh, this, that there will be a serious follow-up given uh, to their complaints. Uh, on that point, uh, Mr. Garrett, did, did you ever sort of inform the government about those activities that, that you talked about with your, involving your family? Oh, yes, we did. We, uh, we talked to CSIS, and they sort of explained uh, they couldn't do too much, but they would try. And they would look into it, but they said they just change operators very quickly, and you, you can't pin anything on anyone very easily. In, in this case, and especially as the government sort of figures out how they're going to navigate this going forward, what they said in the last week, Mr. Garrett, was that they were assessing essentially what the consequences will be. Mm -hmm. You yourself were a victim basically of Chinese retribution, right, in response to something that happened here in Canada. I believe Mr. Saint-Jacques, to, to your side there, actually said it was the first clear-cut case of that kind of retaliation. Um, how worried should Canada be about Chinese retaliation here, Mr. Garrett? I think they will retaliate somehow. It might not be overt. It may be with trade. It may be something else that hurts Canada in that way. And, and do you think that despite that, Canada should still do what it did? Absolutely. You, we have to do something because it's been going on for a very long time. And you have to stand up and, and say something and do something or else it'll just keep going on. It might change form now, but it'll still continue. Mr. Saint Jacques, uh, China has retaliated, right? They've, uh, to a certain degree, but but very kind of similar in in nature. They have expelled a Canadian diplomat uh, posted in Shanghai. Do you expect further retribution? I would say not at this stage, unless the Canadian mm -hmm. government were to take uh, other measures, uh, expel other people. And I think that it was a measured uh, response on the part of China. I think they don't want to escalate this. Uh, they know that. Uh, uh, if they were to take uh, economic sanctions against Canada, this would be badly received by the business community, not only in Canada, but uh, across uh, uh, Western countries. In fact, uh, a number of foreign companies have started to reduce their operations in China or to relocate. There is an offensive charm by uh, President uh, Xi Jinping and Premier Li Chang to uh, attract uh, foreign investors, foreign companies to come to China to do business. They are concerned because the economic situation is not doing very well. And so uh, for, for these reasons, uh, I think that uh, that will be it uh, for now. Uh, of course, if they, if they were to take uh, economic sanctions, uh, there would be a good opportunity at the end of next week for uh, Prime Minister uh, Trudeau to raise uh, uh, this problem with is uh, the, the fellow members of the uh, G7 uh, countries, which uh, will meet in Hiroshima. Uh, Mr. Garrett, last question to you. I was sort of thinking back to when you were detained and freed from from 2014 to 2016, and sort of the the difference in ways that various countries, including this one, thought of China and approached China at that time. Do you think there has been a, a tangible difference? And would you like to see countries like Canada take a harder line against China? I think among people I know, people have started to avoid China now, even avoiding Chinese products, which is very hard to do. Um, but I think we just need to stand up like Canada did this week by expelling the, that diplomat. We, we have to do those things so that we don't get walked all over. And to uh, Guy Saint-Jacques' point, you know, maybe they won't go any further right now, but they'll be ready to if they need to. Okay.